Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my version of the Index Card a Day 2019 Challenge. I'm off prompt and in my quote journal with a brand new theme, Believe. The techniques that I'm going to show are getting design inspiration from magazine ads and using negative painting. So as you may know, I am using my old Happy Planner and I've gone way back when a couple months ago and I did a bunch of gel printing on these pages and I'll put a link to those videos. Then I've done some stenciling on top of that. Just randomly one day that was what my create daily part was about and I grabbed two of the cookie and cake stencils from the crafters workshop swirls and waves and I've done some stenciling with white and with different blues that were also in the background of this gel print. And this has been sitting there waiting for me to become inspired and to use it as a background. So I like having that stash of ready to go backgrounds. Now I could use this background as is because I absolutely love it but I'm going to do some negative painting on that and the inspiration for what I'm going to do comes from this magazine ad obviously a makeup ad with eyeshadow now I could glue this on and it totally goes with this background and that could be my element and I might still do that but what I'm taking instead is the shape the squares as well as the orientation of the squares kind of cascading down so I'm going to duplicate that design feature now remember the people who make up these ads are experts in design and color and we can take hints from how they display their stuff what color themes they use and use those in our art aside from just using the actual magazine clipping. So what I did is I cut some squares the same size because I figure this, this size is working for my quote journal. If I was doing a larger canvas or an art journal page that was bigger, I would increase the size of this square. So I'm just cutting them out and I cut them out because I am visual and I need to see it laid out to go on. So I, it's a step I take and I'm adding one and I just like that kind of swoop throughout the page. Now instead of using negative painting, I could have cut these squares out of some of my gel prints and glued those on. and. I could have done it that way. Now I'm looking at the background and I know I'm going to use the negative painting technique. So the background is going to disappear, but I want to add a lot of interest to the squares that are left visible. So I grab some texture stamps. Now this one is a Tim Holtz one. And I believe it's called Bitty Grunge. And there's just little tidbits of grunge. And I'm putting that in and I'm using the black archival ink. Archival ink because it's permanent. And black because when I do the negative painting later on, I want some of these marks to show through the thin layer of paint. So I'm using a couple of these and this bitty grunge is just perfect for this size. You've got to match the size of the stamp that you have also with the size of your page. And I've got some squares, there's some circles there. And then this is a Stampin' Up set called Classic Background. And I did find links to these in Amazon, so they will be in the description box below as well as the cake and cookie stencils, which are perfect for art journaling. So now that I've got this 
background a little bit more interesting, I am setting up the orientation of these squares. And because I like what the ad person has done and the arrangement of these makeups, the, the eyeshadow, I'm just kind of working off of that. I know it works. I know it appeals to me because it caught my eye. Now I'm getting using tracing this with Stabilo All Pencil and I'm deciding which one is going on top of which one and then I'm getting rid of the excess Stabilo All Pencil with a baby wipe. Because this is going to be overlapped. I want this to look like the tiles are on top of each other. Give it more of a 3D look. So that one's completely showing on top, so I'm getting rid of the lines that I don't need. I'm just kind of figuring out where I want this to go. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, okay, I'm going to put a sentiment in there. I want a big enough space to be able to glue a sentiment down so it looks good. So once all of those are traced out, I grab my Prussian blue, the turquoise from Artist Loft, and white, and I put that on the palette beside me. And then I'm just using an angle brush because I find it gets into the corners. And I'm putting that, mixing that as I apply it, thinning it down with a little bit of water, and just getting in there. Now the angle brush helps you get into those nooks and crannies. So if you struggle with that, Try an angle brush, it'll definitely work. And I'm putting it there. Now, you'll see me coming every once in a while with the baby wipe and kind of pulling off some of the paint. That's because I've decided that I don't want this layer to be opaque. I want to be able to see some of the marks underneath. Kind of like they're in a cloud. And you can see why I've used the black archival ink, because they really show up well. Whereas the blue and the white that was there as part of the background that was already done are more pushed back and you really can't see them. Now I'm taking the time to wipe my glass media mat. And I will put a link to that. I've had several questions about the work surface. I absolutely love this glass media mat and I'm so glad that I took the leap and purchased it. I was really hard on my craft mats. They didn't last very long. And this is wonderful. I can cut on it. It's so easy to clean. The only downside is I get that reflection when I'm making videos. And I'm mixing the paint because I don't want this to look all very one tone. I want, I want that variation. And you can see just even now without doing any of the shading and, and whatever, the squares just really pop. It's always so magical when I, when you do the negative painting technique, I'm always amazed at how great it looks afterwards. And I'll admit, sometimes it's really hard to paint out a background that I love. But it's always worth it in the end. So now I have some of that Prussian blue. And I am floating acrylic on the inside of the square. And then I do it on the outside as well. And you can see how just you did that one. I did that one. It's just popping that much more. That's what shading does. It makes things pop forward and stand out. And I spend a lot of time, time with this. This is not a quick process because you have to let it dry in between. And then you're going to add maybe one or two or three different layers of it 
till you get the fact the effect that you want. Now you can get this effect just by reactivating or activating the Stabilo All Pencil and you will get shading. And on the art journal page, quite honestly, that would have been okay because I don't varnish it. But I get in the habit of using the float technique because it's acrylic paint, therefore it's permanent when dry. So I don't run into reactivating and smearing when I go through the varnish stage. But I don't varnish my art journal pages. I don't find it necessary to do. So then I grab my woodless charcoal pencil, which I love. It's just a quick, easy. If you're struggling with shading, get a woodless charcoal pencil. They are the best. And I like using either the soft or the medium. The hard I find for this purpose doesn't work. I'm sure it has other purposes as an art, but I don't find I use it. So you can see how those squares just really pop out. So here is my Believe sentiment pack that I've cut into basic sizes. And yes, this sentiment pack is now available. This one and all my quote journal packs are $5, as well as my other sentiment packs. And I will put a link to that video that showcases those sentiment packs so you can see what you're getting. So there I try, I put this one on and it just happens to be an almost the perfect size square to what I have. And since I have that square motif kind of going on, that's why I chose that one. Because it just fits what is going on. And the saying says, faith it till you make it. And sometimes with the art journal pages, I find sometimes you have to go on faith that, you know, there's always that ugly stage. You got to believe that it's going to work out in the end. Here I'm splattering with silver paint that I've thinned down and I always use my fan brush to splatter. And I love, love, love that. It just brought it to life. And silver goes really well with blue. So I'm taking the Prussian blue, and I think I had some black on this makeup sponge as well, and just edging the sentiment, just to give it a bit of a border, and just adhering this down with gel medium. And I'm wrapping my gel medium brush in saran wrap, because I keep using that gel medium brush. I'm doing several iCADs in one sitting. So instead of throwing it in water and, you know, washing it and, and everything, I'm just doing, just keeping it from drying out in the short term. So I'm grabbing my fine line bottle. Now this has black paint in it and I inadvertently got it too thin. It was just spreading too much. So I actually poured out some of it and I'm adding more black paint to get to that thickness that I want. And I think I finally got it. And it's just trial and error. I don't have direct measurements because everybody's paint is different. And even if it's an older paint, it may end up being thicker than if it was a brand new paint. Sometimes they thicken up. So I'm edging this with the black fine line bottle, a staple in my studio. I was tempted to outline the squares and I decided, no, I like the softer look that is there. I absolutely love this page. I will be playing with this orientation and the square shape on a canvas in some future time. This has given me an idea. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, Check out my links and I hope you give this a try.